السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان صدق الله العلي العظيم In the previous week, we mentioned the manners of the speech, the manners of speaking, and the manners of discussion, Adab al Kalam. And we said that one of God's greatest gifts to the humanity is the ability to express ourselves our emotions, our ideas, our thoughts. And that does distinguish between humans and animals. And this is why humans are defined as being people of reason. Al-insan, haywanun natiq, of reason and intelligence and logic and kalam, expression. إِنَّ مِنَ الْبَيَانِ لَسِحْرَ Sometimes the expression is considered very fascinating, magical, magical, especially when it comes to poetry, Arabic poetry, Farsi, Urdu, English, French. A poet can create magic through his or her expression and powerful words. And therefore, the first adab and the first manner of speech, adab al kalam, is what the Quran advocates. وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Do not pursue if you don't know. لا تقل مفسرين they interpret this verse as لا تقل إلا ما تعلم Never say unless you know. If you are asked or if you are engaged in a con conversation about something or someone, do not utter if you don't know. Because there is a charge for that. There is a charge. When we speak, there is a charge. You have to pay. And sometimes the payment is very he heavy. إن السمع this is the payment إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤول you're going to be held accountable and responsible for everything you say and everything you hear so Quran says you have to research you have to investigate you have to be sure of what you are going to say before you speak Many times, a simple comment, very short, it will bequeath a long period of remorse and regret. It does a lot of damage. Simple, simple yes, simple no, 
simple comment on something or someone. At the same time, Islam says, if you want to give your opinion about something, then you have to listen to both sides of the arguments. When a husband and wife, when a father and son, when two neighbors, when two partners, they come to you, they have a problem, they have a dispute. You must listen to both. Never judge the case, any case, unless you listen to both. Even if one of them is very mu'min in your perception, he's very faithful, and the other is fasiq. But still, you have to listen to both. Never issue your opinion on anything unless you listen to both sides. This is one of the adabs of kalam and opinion and judgment. The second requirement for the kalam and the manners of the speech is that we should not be under the control of our emotions and sentiments when we speak, when we judge, when we give an opinion about someone or something. We should not be under the control of our emotions and sentiments. Neither we should be in the state of desire, shahwa, or the state of grudge and hate, when we hate something, when we hate someone, we should not give an opinion. Neither under the influence of ghadab and anger. At the time of anger, we, whatever we say is nonsense. Whatever we say about what, whatever we say and whoever we say to is nonsense. Is not considered. This is why the jurist fuqaha, they say at-talaq, divorce, under the influence of anger is unacceptable, is invalid. If someone says to his wife, you are divorced, and usually they say it three times, taliqun, taliqun, taliq ila jahannam, you know. <laughs> fuqaha, jurist, from all the traditions, they say this type of divorce is invalid unacceptable because it was under the influence of ghadab and ghadab has been defined by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdhal salatu was salam al-ghadabu dharbun min al-junoon it's a type of madness madness has different impressions expressions types one of them is ghadab when someone becomes angry then he's not normal then whatever he or she say is unacceptable. Even they do not accept his or her testimony in the court if he is angry. They don't. This is why the Prophet said to one of the companions when he sought his advice in Sahni Ya Rasulullah, he said, La taghva, la taghva, la taghva. Three times. Therefore, when we speak, we have to be under the influence of logic and aq, and reason, not under the influence of hate, excessive hate and excessive love. Both of them are bad. Both of them are bad. Whether you love someone excessively or you hate him excessively, both of them are bad. And whatever you're going to say about them in these two conditions is not going to be realistic. It's going to be emotional. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam says, أَحْبِبْ حَبِيبَكَ هَوْنًا مَا عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَدُوَّكَ يَوْمًا مَا وَأَبْغِضْ عَدُوَّكَ هَوْنًا مَا عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ حَبِيبَكَ يَوْمًا مَا When it comes to love and hate, take it easy. No excessiveness, no immoderation. When you love someone, love him or her with moderation because they might become your enemies tomorrow. And when you hate someone, hate him with moderation, they might become your friends tomorrow. Who knows? Asallahu an yaj'ala baynakum wa bayna alladheena aadaytum minhum mawadda. Allah says to the Muslims, those 
non-believers that you hate today, maybe one day Allah will turn the hearts so you start liking them and loving them. Mawadda. Who knows? Who knows what will happen in this life? No friendship is eternal. Neither any animosity is eternal. A friendship can turn into animosity and the animosity could one day turn into a friendship. We're going to abuse people if we talk about them when we are angry. In the case of anger, in the case of hate, as well as the case of riva and satisfaction. Even in, in case when you are happy with someone, that sentence at that time, whatever you're going to say about him or her is, is untrue. Most likely to be untrue. Because you are happy with that person. Now you are happy. You have to be neutral. When we speak about people, we have to be neutral. And Islam tells us in the same way that excessive dispraise and criticism, excessive criticism and chiding is unacceptable. You may criticize someone, but do not do, it, do too much of that within moderation. Don't exaggerate. When we criticize someone, when we chide, when we reprimand, we also have to be moderate. No exaggeration. In the same way, when we praise someone, we do madh, madih, we praise him, we commend him or her, again we have to be moderate. We have to be moderate. In some cultures, in some societies, when they hate someone, he becomes shaitan. Even worse than shaitan. And if they love that person for a couple of days, they make him malaika angel. You hear the praise, mashallah. All this good vocabulary in that language is going to be dedicated to praising that person. This is not good. This is a type of nifaq, hypocrisy. Be balanced. We have to be balanced when we speak. Sometimes he comes to you asking for your daughter's hand and then you ask about this person. You ask another family. And it happens that this family are his friends and they like him. Oh, they're going to say every good thing about him. He's an angel, he's this, he's this, he's that. And then you trust what they say. This is a responsibility. You have to tell the truth. They say, can, they say the truth is mandatory here, even if the person is your friend, but he has something bad. You have to tell them about his badness and his evil. Don't put them under the illusion that he's immaculate, he's pure. And this is not considered ghiba or backbiting. You have to tell them the truth. Because they want to live with him. Their daughter wants to marry him and live with him. And they came to you asking your opinion. Either we say, I really don't know. Ask someone else. But if people insist on you and you have to say something, then it has to be true without exaggeration. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam says about the pious. He has a khutbah, khutbah al-muttaqeen. One of the most beautiful sermons in Nahj al-Bala. Ida zukkiya ahaduhum. He says the pious, when he is praised by a group of people, the community or someone, he becomes fearful of this praise. He doesn't like it. He doesn't enjoy it. Ida zukkiya ahaduhum. He will be worried because people are praising him. Because this will create, if the nafs is weak and people are praising me, then I think, yeah, look at me. Everyone says I'm good, then it means I'm excellent. But the prudent becomes worried because these could be illusions. These diplomacies that are used by people and some of them out of goodness, they use them are misleading, are misleading with the majority of people. He becomes fearful and worried of these praises and these positive 
comments. فيقول, he would say, أنا أعلم بنفسي من غيري. I know myself. Even if people say this and this, these good things about me, but I know myself. I know better than others. وربي أعلم وربي أعلم بنفسي مني. And definitely my Lord is more aware of me than myself. اللهم لا تؤخذني بما يقولون. When they praise me, don't charge me with what they say. Don't. لا تؤخذني بما يقولون. واجعلني أفضل مما يظنون. Inside me, make me better than what they say. واغفر لي ما لا يعلمون. And forgive. Forgive me what they don't know about me. They praise me and they don't know about me the truth. So forgive what they don't know about me. We come to the third pillar and the third point in the manners of speech, adab al-kalam. And that is, the speech has to be based on delil and evidence. قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقٍ When we have a discussion, when we have a debate about anything, religion, politics, sports, whatever, we have to have the evidence. قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ Bring your delil, your evidence. When you speak, when you present your argument, your case, you have to bring delil for that, evidence. قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ in Kuntum Sadiq. And this Burhan, sometimes, Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, sometimes, <laughs> this Burhan has to be acceptable and logical. Ma'qool, logical. And it has to be proven and backed by evidence. You show the evidence. These are my evidence. It has to be backed. A case which is not backed by evidence is a failing case. It's unacceptable. Even when you, when you have a claim against someone, when you have a claim against someone, whether in the court or outside the court, you have to bring the shahood, the witnesses. You cannot say, I am the most religious person. Oh, people, how can you don't believe me? No, we believe you, but... Islam says and the Holy Quran says you have to bring al ala al -mudda'i. The plaintiff has to bring evidence ala al -mudda'i, bayin. And evidence what I am saying is true. You need an evidence. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam he went to the court and he had evidence with him. Witnesses with him. No one is above the law. Yes, in the eyes of Allah, Allah knows who's who. But in this life, we are ordinary citizens. No different from any other citizen. قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Also in Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be careful when someone untrustworthy, or licentious, or desolate, or immoral, or indecent, brings you news. Be careful. فَتَبَيَّنُوا be careful, investigate. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in fatabayyanu. Be discerning. Be discerning. Do not take it. If this person has a bad history, then don't take whatever he or she is saying as facts. Fatabayyanu. Be discerning. Lest that you hurt a group of people out of ignorance. أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Someone comes to you and he says, Oh, this person, he stole my money, he did this, he did this. And, you, and then you agree with him and you start cursing the other, other person. But then when you investigate, it is baseless. All allegations. إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ فَتَبَيِّنُ a person who is known for his lies. Whatever he says, we have to investigate. Someone who is not committed to honesty and integrity, whatever he or she says, we have to investigate. Be the servant. Fatabayya. This is to keep a society strong. 
human relations strong that any rumors is unacceptable any gossiping is unacceptable I tell you something I've been here serving this community for 22 years now if you ask me say it what did you learn I will put it in one sentence this is my experience that whenever there is a disagreement between two be it a husband and wife be it two friends two neighbors two partners father and son I would never hear from one side only and judge I tell them both of you even though you are my friend I know you for 20 years but when you come to me complaining about your wife I have to listen to your wife too not because I am saying you are a liar no but this is what Quran teaches me I have to listen to both arguments 99% of the cases when you listen to one side and you take it only from one side and then you judge you give your verdict 99% of the cases are false and wrong you must listen to both sides you must listen to both sides even if the other side is your enemy give yourself a chance to listen Today, we have something did not exist tomorrow. Social networks, these social networks. You know, most of what you read in social networks are not true. Most of them are not true. I call them anti-social networks. Twitter and Facebook and this, these are anti, they break the families, they break societies, they break friendships and relationships between the people. Be careful, especially today, when you have this widespread of social communication, we have to be more careful in judging or giving our verdict about any person in the society. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin. الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد أفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي أجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب صدق الله العلي العظيم The most difficult thing in this life is to find a person who is prudent and mature. Being prudent, al-aqil, al-kamil, and mature, it's very difficult to find. And perfection belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
One day, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, were sitting around him and telling him about another companion, about his qualities, his commitment, his faith, his prayers, his zakat, his givings, his generosity, this and that. All of a sudden, the Prophet وسلم, said, وَلَكِنْ اِخْبِرُونِ عَنْ عَقْلِهِ You spoke about everything, but you did not tell me about his reason, his aql. They were shocked. They said, Ya Rasulullah, نُخْبِرُكَ عَنْ صُنُوفِ الْخَيْرِ We are telling you about his achievements, how much good things he did to his community, to his society. وَتَسْأَلُنَا عَنْ عَقْلِهِ And you are asking us about his reason. He said, definitely I ask you about his reason. لِأَنَّهُ The Prophet said, إِنَّ الْأَحْمَقَ يُصِيبُ بِحُمْقِهِ أَفْجَرَ أَعْظَمَ مِنْ فُجُورِ الْفَاجِرِ Someone who does not ahmaq is the opposite of aqil. Aqil prudent. Ahmaq is someone who does not have, not insane, no, not insane, but his aql is not complete. This is ahmaq. The Prophet said sometimes an Ahmaq, someone who could be mu'min but Ahmaq at the same time, he does damage to his himself and his family and his society and his country even worse than the worst criminals. And then the Prophet said, what send you up and up on the day of judgment to the highest levels is the Aql is how much aql, how much brain, how much reason, how much intellect you have. This is, this is how mu'mineen are distinguished from one another. In paradise, they are not in the same level. They, get, they give them the darajat, the levels, according to their understanding and their aql. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu ha- has a simple definition for aql. سئل من العاقل يا أمير المؤمنين فقال هو الذي يضع الشيء في موضعه عاقل the prudent not necessarily he knows physics and chemistry and mathematics and algebra and economy no but he is the one who puts things in their own perspective in their own position he is a balanced person a balanced person is عاقل they said to him صف لنا الجاهل Give us the opposite of aqil, jahil. Who is the jahil, the ignorant? He said, qad fa'alt. I did, I already did. I already did. If you examine what I said, I already did. When I defined the aqil, at the same time I defined the jahil. Who is the jahil? Then he is the one who puts things not in their own position, in the wrong place. This is jahil. Al-Imam Al-Kadhim, alayhi salatu wassalam, also has five points when he speaks about the aqil. And these five points are practical points that we use them in our daily life. Number one, he says, إِنَّ الْعَاقِلَ لَا يُحَدِّثُ مَنْ يَخَافُ تَكْذِيبَهُ He would not spend his time speaking and talking to someone who's going to ultimately reject him. So don't waste your time. Don't speak and don't try to convince someone that you already know he's not going to listen to you. This is one sifa, one character of the aqil. The second, he said, وَلَا يَسْأَلُ مَنْ يَخَافُ مَنْعَهُ He would not seek help from someone that he knows he's not going to say yes to him. Again, don't. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your honor. Don't spoil your honor asking someone who is not going to give you. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam says, احتج إلى من شئتكن أسيرة When you need people, when you need them, then you become their captives, أسير to them. واستغني عن من شئت Don't ask them for help, تكن نظيرة You become their counterpart. Even if you are penniless and he's a multi-billionaire. When you don't ask him, you are his counterparts. You are in, his, in the same level. وَأَحْسَنْ إِلَى مَنْ شِئْتْ Do favors and help others. 
To others, takun amira, you become their masters. So which one do you want to choose? The first one, asir, or nadir, or amir, it's up to us. It's up to our character. The third, he says, the third character of the aqil, wala ya'idu ma la yaqdiru alayh. He would never promise anyone something that he knows he cannot deliver. This is why the GOP are all majaneen, majnoon. Because when you listen to their debate, the only thing they give are false promises. And they know themselves they cannot deliver. But to buy votes, that's it. All majaneen. Either majnoon or they impious. They have no... No accountability and no responsibility. By the way, don't waste your time listening to them. Believe me. Don't waste your time. Nothing but nonsense. Did you see them, how they fight like kids? Worse than kids. And they call each other liars. Each other liars. And today, Chris Christie, he comes and he endorses Trump. Yesterday, he was calling him a liar. See, this is politics. This is dirty politics. Believe me, watching the you know, uh, bullfights, it's more, has more thawab than watching those guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding here, huh? don't take this here. <laughs> then the fourth one, alamatul, the character of the aqil, the fourth one, wala yarju ma yu'annafu bi raja'ih. He would not desire or wish something that is going, people are going to chastise him. When you, when something is bad and you know bad, if you do it, if you say it, people are going to chastise you, criticize you. Don't do it. That's it. Save your honor. Don't do that. This is number four and number five. When you know this project is failing, don't do that. Don't rush into doing something without understanding the consequences of it. Don't do that. Be careful. Unless you know that it is successful. And sometimes we know it is successful, but it is going to turn into a failure. No problem. But some people don't even think about the consequences. Ju they jump in. They take the risk. Don't do that. A aqil would not do that. Allahumma khfar lil mu'mineena wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. My friends, uh, the deadline for the ziyara, we are organizing a group for the ziyara of the Atabat in Iraq and Iran, April 3rd until April 17th, and the deadline would be Monday. So if you want to join us, and I am going to be your servant, inshallah, in this trip, then please go to Brother Samir and register before the end of the deadline, inshallah. And also, there are friends... Uh, who are in the hospital, some of them they had surgeries. Let's remember them this time. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amman yujibu al-muhtarra idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-suh. Amman yujibu al-muhtarra idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-suh. Amman yujibu al-muhtarra idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-sumuh. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ يَا اللَّهُ مُنَّ عَلَى مَرْضَانَا بِالشِّفَاءِ وَالْعَافِيَةِ المرضى المنظورين اللهم ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية وحد كلمة المسلمين على الخير والبر والصلاح والتقوى يا أرحم الراحمين وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح الشهداء والمؤمنين ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد